Hi, I'm Rachel. I'm a second year medical student at Oxford and today I'm going to be talking about everything that you need to know to get the score that you want in your BMAT. Uh, first I'm going to talk a bit about the format of the exam and then chat a little bit about the scores that you need um, and talk a bit about my scores and then I'll go in a bit more in depth into the three different sections of the exam. Uh, I remember finding the process a bit stressful whenever I was doing it so hopefully this will help to um, take a bit of the mystery out of the process and help you. I sat the 2019 BMAT and I got a 7.4 in section 1, I got 6.9 in section 2 and I got 4.5A in my essay. So the BMAT is a two hour paper and it comprises three sections, the first of which is called aptitude and skills and that paper lasts an hour. And then the second part of the paper um, tests your knowledge of science and maths and it lasts half an hour. And then in the final half an hour you write one A4 page, it's an essay answering a question that's medically themed. The scoring for the BMAT can be a little difficult to understand initially. The first two papers are out of 32 and 27 respectively, that's how many questions you'll answer. But you actually end up with a score out of 9 for both of them. Your essay is instead marked by two examiners, both of which give it a score from 1 to 5 for the quality of your argument and the quality of the content, with 5 being the best possible score, then you get an average. And you also get a score from A to E based on the quality of your English. In terms of the sort of scores you're aiming to get, I would say that a score of 4.5 or above and 4.5 is roughly the average for sections 1 and 2 and I would say that a score of 4.5 or above are the sort of thing that most medical schools are looking for. Uh, they say that a score of 5 is good and above 6 is great for sections 1 and 2. 10-15% to 15 of people are scoring above 6 in their sections and then a score of above 7 is considered to be excellent. The freedom of information request for most of the uni show that their um, cutoffs are in the 4s, the scores for sections 1 and 2. For section 3 of your BMAT, I would say that a score of 3 or above is what you're aiming for for the quality of content and in terms of your English score I would say a B or an A is probably what you're aiming to get in that as well. Although some uh, unis put more emphasis on the essay than others whenever it comes to selecting applicants for interview. Since you won't know your BMAT score before you make your university applications, I would advise doing some past papers in the weeks leading up to your application just to give you an idea of roughly where you're scoring so you can decide which of the BMAT unis you'd like to apply to. Although I would say that if you're not getting the scores that you want or that you need, I would say don't despair because there's definitely so much progress that you can make from there. In terms of my general advice for the BMAT, I would say don't listen to the rumours that you can't prepare for the BMAT because you, you absolutely can. I would say to use the admissionstesting.org website. I think they've got past papers dating back to the early 2000s. So I would use all of those, even the ones that are from way back and they're slightly outdated now, but the same kind of questions are being asked. So definitely use them. I would also advise people to use Medify. It's great, it's a really good online resource and it's got so many past paper questions. Booking a uni read session could also be really helpful whenever it comes to preparing for your BMAT. Uh, you can talk to someone who's already sat the test and you could chat with them maybe through your essays, through the ideas that you have, or you could ask, get them to ask you questions to help you revise for the scientific section. I think that's something that would be really helpful as well to help you prepare. Another piece of general advice, and this applies to the UCAT as well and is maybe something that um, you use to prepare for your UCAT, is to start timing yourself as early as possible, start doing the sections under time pressure in order to really get yourself used to doing the work as quickly as possible and just moving on and powering through the questions. In section one of the BMAT, you answer 32 questions in an hour and that's definitely tight for time, especially given that there are lots of different types of questions. There are text-based questions, there are numerical questions, there are also questions pertaining to shapes and diagrams and so there's a lot to take in and it's also, I would say, possibly the most difficult to prepare for in terms of there aren't that many resources out there. It's really the only thing you can do is sit and go through past paper questions and go through them and through them and through them. I would say that certain questions can be similar to those found in the UCAT, so any UCAT preparation that you will have done will be really helpful for that. And if you haven't done the UCAT, there's a huge bank of UCAT questions out there that you can go and you can use them. And similarly, the TSA, um, there's similar sort of questions. That's another type of admissions test and I would advise using them. They're slightly different, but it's, a lot, it's the same sort of format and I would say that that could be really helpful. I would advise that you jump straight to the question for section one of the BMAT, especially in the, the text-based questions where sometimes you can have big paragraphs of text and so if you jump straight to the question that'll help you when you're reading 
through the text to sort of figure out what information you want and it also helps you really quickly to eliminate some of the options because you know if you have a to e as your options it quite often comes down to just just two or three different questions Section two of the BMAT can be easier to work towards just because you're answering questions based on GCSE maths, biology, chemistry and physics. You can revise where you can do more things outside of just doing past paper questions. I would recommend printing off the BMAT syllabus for section two and highlighting it, using it to make notes, go back over all of your GCSE content. I know for me, for example, I didn't do A-level physics and so I knew I had to put an emphasis on the physics and having the specification really helps with that. So that would be my main advice for section two. That and it's one that's really tight for time. You basically only have a minute for each question. So it's really important to be able to get them done as quickly as possible. If you find that you don't have enough past paper questions for section two of the BMAT, it can be helpful to go back and do GCSE and A-level past papers, do the short answer questions. If you do AS, that's even better. Sometimes there are multiple choice questions on the A-level papers and those can be really helpful for just practicing section two of the BMAT. Just you know, anything that you can find that sort of mimics the format of the BMAT is, is ultimately gonna be really helpful. In terms of the essay question for the BMAT, there are a lot of things that you can do in order to help prep for this. And I know this is the section that most people are afraid of. I know that it was the one that made me the most stressed but there are so many things that you can do to help yourself um, to improve your essays. First of all, whenever it comes to that English mark, if you're not happy with your writing, something that I found to be quite helpful would be using Grammarly. I typed my first few essays and I stuck them through Grammarly and that helped to pull up any sort of issues that I had, any kind of grammatical things that I, were, you know, mistakes that I was repeatedly making and that can be really helpful, even just for things like punctuation. I would say when you start off working on the BMAT, I would look at some of the past papers, maybe go way back, start with the really early one, 2005, 2006, and have a look at the different essay titles. And you'll notice that there's different sort of types of questions that they'll ask. There'll be ones where they'll give you a very general quote that it'll be something like, medicine is an art, not a science. To what extent do you agree something like that where it's sort of it's a bit more vague but less tangible and then there are questions which are much more sort of specific a bit more a bit more scientific in their questioning and it's good to go through familiarize yourself with both types and maybe even start to figure out which ones you know you prefer which ones you think you might be able to write a better essay that's something that's quite important although uh, i know that i decided that i was more happy answering the quote ones and then on the day i got a quote that i wasn't really very happy with and i ended up having to write the the sort of the more scientific question one that was asking about the um, multidisciplinary team and the roles um of you know individual doctors versus the role of the mdt as a whole and so i think it's good to practice both types even if you're more comfortable with one make sure that you're really happy just in case um on the day you get questions that you're you may be thinking mm, I'd, I'd rather do the scientific one i'd rather answer the quote when you start your prep for section three my advice would be don't leap straight into writing essays but rather for the first few essays that you do i would just do a mind map i would maybe spend 15 minutes and just plan write everything that you think you could possibly say about the question and then order it you know try and come up with a what would i say in my intro what would i say in my conclusion and then over time cut this down and down down make sure you can do it in five minutes so you can get everything that you want written down in the five minutes from this you can then use those mind maps use those plans and use all those ideas you have and, and discuss the topic with you know a teacher or a friend or a parent or sibling or i mean literally anyone that you can find just you know pester everyone in your life and try and find someone to help you and just chat with them through the topics. I spent half an hour a week with one of my biology teachers and we just chatted through all of the different questions. I would oppose a statement, he would propose that the statement was right. You know, that would give me so many new helpful insights, new ideas, especially whenever it comes to the quotes, new ways of looking at it. I know that in a few uni reach sessions that I've done with uh, sixth form students, we've talked through some of the BMAT essay questions and I think that could be quite helpful. And then I added on to this by doing some research on the side. All of the things that you'll be doing for your interviews anyway, reading articles, watching the news, reading papers, all that sort of thing. And I would try and sort of memorize key facts, just sort of big things that you could maybe shoehorn into lots of different types of essays, you know, things like how many people in the UK have heart disease or the, you know, the annual budget of the NHS, little facts that you can maybe start slipping into the essays as well. And even, you know, if you find a short quote from, you know, maybe a famous doctor or a scientist, something that you think might fit quite well with a number of different essay titles, you can memorize them. Although it is important to remember that you, you don't want to be stuffing your essay full of stats just because that takes away from quality of English. It doesn't flow quite as well. Alongside this is making sure that you know your medical ethics and your pillars of medicine really, really well because they're important. It's important that you're able to include them. I would say the most important thing is 
making sure that you answer all the parts of the questions. Some of the essays, there can be four sub questions after the initial quote or whatever they give you. And so it's really important to make sure that you're including all of them in your answer. Practice dedicating time to each of them, making sure that you're giving them each the space that they need, whether one of them is just a, you know, just a few lines in the introduction or whether one of them requires a, a big chunk of the body of your essay. It's really important to make sure that you're including all of them in your essay. Once you're happy with your preparation and you've done all of your planning, I would then start to write essays. And what I did was I tried to write one essay from every year from when the past papers begin on the website to um, the most recent paper, um, which seems like a lot. But for the first year, I tried typing them on the computer and that was really helpful because you can then put them through Grammarly as well. And that'll help you with your quality of English mark if you're not happy with punctuation or grammar as well that helps you to pick up on sort of key mistakes that you make quite often. It is important though that you start practicing as early as possible writing your essays in the format that you're going to be writing them in in the actual exam you know so if you're going to be in person it's important to make sure that you're practicing writing them by hand especially because you only have the one A4 page with that you want to make sure practicing that your handwriting you get it as small as possible whenever you're writing at speed just because then you can fit in more and more words. I really hope that this video and the advice has been helpful. Just remember that there's so many BMAT resources out there and you can always book a uni read session if you need you know, any further help or advice from um, a student who's already been through the BMAT. And good luck with your exam.